Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we got another exciting episode for you. Uh, we're gonna build another tool, something you can have in your toolbox. It's gonna help you out in a lot of different situations, especially if you're getting into fabrication. So today we're gonna make what's called a dog and a wedge. And so if you have some plates that are misaligned, I used to use this a lot when I was doing structural steel iron work. A lot of times we would get plates in that were kind of bent or you know they got a bow in them just because of the way they were transported on the truck uh, to get to the job site. So what we'd have to do is flatten those plates down and weld those to I-beams. Uh, so we're gonna show you a way of doing that with the, uh, the dog and the wedge. It's very simple, very effective, easy to make. You build it today and you got it you know, with you the, the rest of your life as long as you don't lose it. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so what I have here is a couple pieces of plate, about 5 16 thick, and this one right here is bent. Okay, I've got about a quarter inch rise in there and it's too rigid for me just to push down and I don't have clamps. I could probably weld a C-clamp on here or the half clamp that we built in a previous episode and that would take that down. We're gonna show you another cool trick uh, just in case you don't have a, a, a half clamp. Um, so everybody should have a dog and a wedge in their toolbox, um, you know, especially if you're doing fabrication or you know, structural steel or installation, anything like that where you have to uh, kind of make, fit, you know, make pieces fit or manipulate them the way you need to before you can weld on them. So let's go ahead, we're gonna go over to the cutting table, show you how to build one. So the great thing about these is you can make them out of scrap metal. So I just have a couple chunks of scrap here. Uh, I've got some uh, 3 8 plate and then 3 quarter plate. So, I mean, you can make it out of whatever you want. Um, I'd go with a thicker type material, half inch or better for your wedge. And then, you know, quarter inch or better for the, uh, the plate dog. So we're going to go ahead and start off with the plate dog. I'm just going to measure this up an inch and a half. And you can do this whatever, you can make it whatever size you want. Um, but they, they sh the pieces should correspond with one another. So I'm just going to double check this. Yep, we've got an inch and a half. And I'm just going to come down just a little bit. Not too far. And I'm just going to basically just take this corner out. Okay, and that's it for the dog. Okay, that's the plate dog right there. And like I said, that's only an uh, inch and a half up. And I did that because I'm only going to make the height of my, my wedge an inch and a half. So if I was going to make a two inch wedge, make you a two inch slot in here. Yep. All right, so this is the outline of the wedge that I'm going to cut out. And I just went up two inches came over an inch and an eighth, down a half inch, and then just went from that point down to zero. So from the bottom to here, I have an inch and a half. The same as what I cut out that plate dog to be, so I have that inch and a half. That way when I, once everything's cut up, cleaned and prepped, when I utilize this, I have a little stopper right here that's gonna, that's gonna keep me from uh, pushing that other plate, the plate that I'm trying to get flush, it's gonna keep it from going down any further. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, cut this out. Right now I'm just heating up the bottom side of this three quarter inch plate. This tip's big enough to cut it, but I find that if you heat up uh, the bottom a little bit more, kind of get some preheat going on there, it cuts a lot smoother. All right, so here is the plate dog and here's the wedge. I'm gonna go take these over to the grinder. We're gonna clean them up and then I'll show you exactly how to use them. Next up, we're gonna do a little bit of cleaning. I'm gonna do the preliminary cleaning with this hard rock. Um, and then I'm gonna do like the fine cleaning once I get done with the, uh, I've got a 60 grit Zerk wheel. So I'll just kind of clean it up a little bit. It's a tool I wanna keep for a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of time with it, make sure it's nice and neat. Okay, so I went ahead, cleaned it up with a hard rock first, and then headed up with a zerk wheel. I just wanna round off all the corners. I have to work with this you know, with my hands. So I don't want any sharp edges on there. And I also want it nice and smooth, so when these two pieces are working together, they don't bind up on anything. Whenever you get done cutting, you got some ridges in there. Go ahead, clean them up. I want a nice smooth area in here. That way nothing's getting bound up uh, as I'm trying to use them. So let's go ahead and take them over to the pieces and I'll show you exactly how they work and how to use them. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna weld about an inch, inch and a quarter tack on the backhand side of here. Whatever side that I put the tack weld on, that's the side that I'm gonna drive the wedge from. If I tack weld the back side here and I drive it from this way, it's gonna shear that weld off. 
And the reason I'm gonna weld just on one side is because when I get done, I'm gonna be able to take a crescent wrench and just break that weld free. So I wanna try to set this up, you know, for the least amount of work as possible once I'm done using it. So we'll go ahead and put a tack on the back. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, just need something that'll hold. Okay, so just like we talked about, I got about a one inch, one inch tack weld on there. Once I get done, I'll be able to break it right off with the crescent wrench. So to line everything up, again, I'm going to bring the wedge in from the same side that I put the tack on. Then I'm just gonna drive that wedge through there. Now because the dog and the wedge are the same height where I have that little shelf, as soon as I put that shelf up against that wedge, I know that I'm exactly flush and that's right where I wanna be. So now I can go ahead and tack these two pieces together and it'll keep that bow from popping back up. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and put a couple tacks on here and then I'll show you how to break the, uh, the dog and the wedge loose and then we'll see the final product. Okay, now with these two pieces tacked in here, wherever you need to make your tacks or your welds, I can go ahead and remove the dog and the wedge. Just a couple snacks and it's out. You can hit this with a hammer. I prefer just using a crescent wrench because then I can kind of control where that plate's gonna go. Because we welded on one side, just pull back on it, it snaps off. Clean that up with a grinder. Clean this back up before you put it back in your gang box so you don't cut yourself next time you go digging for it. Plates are still nice and flush. I'll clean this up and then you can go ahead and do your weld out or move on to the next section that you have to dog down. Okay, so these are just some of the, uh, the wedges I've collected over the years. Here's another dog we built. Um, we did one during the Hefner cart build that we used. Uh, somewhere around here. Uh, this is probably the oldest one I've had. Uh, you can see this at one point, you know, this one kind of has a shelf and a little stopper. So basically what that's for, so it doesn't shoot through the, the, the plate dog. But there's different variations. See, this one doesn't have a shelf on it at all. Uh, you can actually split material open. So um, I think I made this one for kind of opening pipe up a little bit. You can drive that in there to kind of hold your gap as you do all your tack work. Um, a lot of times, I mean, like I said, it's just all scrap material. Like I think I got this one off of a, a saw. We had some material laying around. I cut a little piece off. Um, same thing with that, you know. So you don't have to cut it with an oxy fuel torch. Cut it with a uh, cut off wheel. You can use a saw. I mean, whatever you have at your disposal. But I mean, these things are invaluable. As you can see, some of them have quite a bit of use. Others don't. But I mean, uh, I use them quite a bit for alignment and fit up. So I mean, fill your box full of them, man. You never know when you're going to need them. All right, guys, I hope you were able to learn something from this episode. Uh, we're going to be doing some additional uh, tricks, showing you little cool tools throughout, you know, uh, fabrication builds, things, uh, things of that nature. So hope you learned something. Appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And until next time, make everyone better than your last.